And how many fish are in there? This is an estimated 92 fish. And this is considered low density for this size, huh? This is a low density for aquaculture. Yeah. This is a high, high, high density for a koi pahar. Pond aquaponics is something that is very, very easily done. Right. So an existing koi pond can be retrofitted to have a, a, an aquaponic grow bed. Okay. Very, very simply. All right. So here's Blue. We named this fish Blue. She's the she's the best eater of the group. And look, now these fish. Let's watch them eat. So this guy's hungry right here. If I stick yeah, my hand are. in here, oh, you must be <laughs> out of your mind, man. Let's see, blue. Man, these fish are beautiful. All right, here we go. All of them. That guy's the eater right there. The yeah. yellow guy, or this yellow, light yellow guy. That guy can eat. Boom, 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 boom. He can't eat. Yeah, he's he like more. King Kong. He can't, eat. he can't eat more than King Kong, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's why we're always trying to strip CO2 out and add an appropriate buffer okay. by sodium bicarbonate. Okay. What we do in recirculating aquaculture. aquaculture. Okay. So what do you use in aquaponics? Um, we use potassium uh, hydroxide uh -huh. or potassium bicarbonate. Right. Or calcium right. hydroxide or right. calcium bicarbonate. Allows you to have those trace elements mm -hmm. for the plant right. in addition to that bicarbonate right. that's going to render the, uh, the CO2 inert mm -hmm. right yeah so it's it's really important to uh to pay attention to water chemistry in the recirculating system okay now i gotta tell you when i'm managing i'm managing this system mm -hmm. i've gone from my management takes i don't know 10 15 minutes okay to i just did the management i just fed the fish okay and that took that me was, yeah, a minute, yeah, yeah, right yeah. so what that that frees me up uh, tons of time right. to do all the other things that I gotta do. do. Yeah. Right. But in an aquaponics system that would free up all your time for your plants. But that's really where you're gonna be spending most of your time yep. in. Yeah, absolutely. Right? absolutely. All right, let's go feed some tilapia. Ooh, right. the tilapia! This is a 2,000 gallon production tank. We've got around 350 tilapia and they're all lurking just below the surface here. Okay. <laughs> How big are these tilapia in here? They look like there's some like pound and a half ones, almost or two pound ones. Oh yeah, yeah. Some of the bigger tilapia in here. And now we have multiple cohorts. Oh, okay, in here, okay. Right. So we've got so that one there. That's, that's a huge that's, one. That's look at him. Two pounder. That one, yep. Yeah. Yep. These fish can be pushed very, very hard to eat constantly, yeah. and they can have a really, really high growth rate at high temperatures. Um, but in an aquaponic system, really what we're looking for is fish that are going to constantly eat mm -hmm. and poop. Right. Right? So, uh, so that's, that, that's a big thing. That's why tilapia is such a great species. You have to have a special permit to raise tilapia in the state of Louisiana. So it's important that whoever is getting into aquaponics understands the laws for purchasing tilapia. Right. Uh, because in Louisiana, um, the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries um, has set up a bond to make sure that any fish that escape uh, can be tracked back to the facility um, that was raising those fish. Because there needs to be accountability. Yeah. A fish like this is an exotic invasive species. Mm -hmm. And so um, if they were to escape, um, and, and they're real good at surviving, Right, even yeah, in poor water quality like yeah. So that's why they're so ubiquitous. That's why they're the most farmed fish on planet Earth. So if they were to escape, they can live in a ditch somewhere, and then they can breed somewhere, and then they get out of the wild. What they would end up doing is out-competing some of the native species. The native species in South Louisiana are really, really important for sport fishing, okay. uh, and for just the ecology of, of the state. The state okay. So, um, they're an intermediate uh, type predator, so they would be um, competing with fish like speckled trout or spotted sea trout, okay. or red drum, or red fish, okay. um, flounder, mm -hmm. catfish, okay. fish like that um, that are really important to the ecology of uh, state water. Okay. So uh, so it's really important that anybody that is going to be farming 
Mafia thinks about um, uh, those laws prior to and prevents that they might need to be out there. We've got our core rearing tank right here. These fish are hungry. So these koi fish are about three months old, maybe four months old. Okay. This is a polygyzer filter, self backwashing filter. Here you can see a clear picture of the beads right here. Right. And these beads here, there. You said the, the is the water coming up from the bottom. That's right. Water comes in here. Okay, here, and this is where and the solids are filtered. Are these big filters with these beads. Right. Forced upwards, and the solids are captured in the beads. Not everybody is um, good at keeping fish. Mm -hmm. That's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are to incorporate a simple technology, mm -hmm. um, even though this is an advanced filter, right. it's a simple thing to operate. So if you operate it simply, what you end up doing is you have clear water, healthy fish, mm -hmm. and those fish are going to eat you. Right. If your fish aren't eating, we're having to see a plant. Yeah, you don't get any nutrients for them. No nutrients for the plant. It's not going to work. So it's very, very important, even though, even if your main focus in the aquaponic system is on the plants, it's very, very important for you to understand that without the fish, no plants. There's nothing, right. There's no plants. Right. So use a technology that is simple. So time-tested, proven, scientifically based, proven technology. That's really the best way for you as an end user of customer right. to get the maximum success. Okay. These beads here, these beads are acclimated, heavily acclimated beads. Okay. All that brown stuff yeah. on there, yeah. that's all your nitrifying bacteria. And you can look inside of the boat shape, right? And you can see, you can see that the bacterial film is really nice and yellow brown yeah. in there. Now, what that means is that our ammonia and nitrite are going to be near zero inside of this tank, even at a high pH. Right. Okay. okay.